Quick little review of what we've already covered. We know that there are these five reasons for establishing two triangles to be congruent. What we learned is generally you start with your givens and then you go to identifying uh, things to find. Usually that was a vertical angle or a common side. And we learned that the way you describe the reason for a common side was the reflexive property. And then usually you shut down the proof with a final congruence statement to say a triangle is congruent to another triangle. We're going to add a different kind of thing to search for. So in, in, this, in this event, we were looking for sides and angles that could be hidden. We're going to add in a new item, and that new item is a set of parallel lines. This provides us a great wealth of information about angle relationships. So important to know, parallel lines, when we learn about them, they're going to tell us about angle relationships. What you're looking at here is kind of a way to help you with the statements and the reasons when you're using something about parallel lines. So in this diagram, we see a, a set of parallel lines. If we saw that, we could say, oh, guess what? I know that three and seven are indeed equal. Or I could say four and eight are indeed equal. If I said that, I could give the reason that because of parallel lines, I get corresponding angles. If I talked about alternate interior angles being equal, as in this case, I could say three and five are actually equal because the parallel lines give me alternate interior angles. If I had parallel lines and I wanted to say that one and seven are equal, I could do that. I could say one and seven are congruent or equal because parallel lines give me alternate exteriors. So what I'm trying to show you is you can make any of these statements uh, because of the parallel lines and the reasons would be the parallel lines gave you corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior. Also, you could state that three and six together are um, supplements. You could say that six, uh, four and five are supplements. And if you said that, you could because you know that they have to add their supplements, they add up to 180, and you'd say that that's true because the same side exteriors are supplements to each other. Similarly, you could finish the last statement, which would be like if you said two and seven must equal 180. And again, the reason would be that they equal 180 and they are same side exteriors. So these are your statements and these are how you write your reasons. Our givens tell us that there are parallel lines and that there is a segment set that are congruent. It's this parallel line idea that really ignites a new way to think. Let's write these in as our givens. Let's mark what we know here. CA is the same as DA, that's in the given. And our markings for parallel are already there. Remember, those do not mean congruent, they mean parallel. Parallel lines imply angles. Take a look. There's some angles we would know. We would know angle C and angle D would have to be congruent because parallel lines give us alternate interior angles that are congruent. It would also be true, we could talk about the vertical angles, but it's also true that these alternate interiors would be equal. So we would have a choice here but I kind of like using this, so I would say B is congruent to E because the parallel lines tell us that alternate interior angles are indeed congruent. The final step then is to bring it home to say that triangle EAD is indeed congruent to BAC. Now let's look at why that is. I have a angle, angle side, angle, angle side. So it's by angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle. Now we had a choice in here. You could have listed the vertical angle and it would have actually changed the result here, I think, to angle, side, angle. 
but this is how we did it, which is perfectly fine. The parallel lines helped us obtain some new information about alternate interiors. We couldn't have used that unless we knew that the lines were parallel. In this example, we get two sets of parallel lines and a side, quite a bit of information. You can see in the diagrams, someone has already placed those parallel lines in for us, which is nice. Um, but let's add in the AB. That means this side is equal to this side. Let's write those things in. Parallel lines help us obtain angles. And I see a set right here, here and here. Why would those be equal? Well, if you follow the parallel lines, here's this one and this one. Here's your transversal. Can you see that those correspond to each other? So angle A um, is congruent to DCE because parallel lines give us corresponding angles that are equal. In a likewise manner, I can say these are parallel. This is a transversal. So this angle would correspond with this one. It would slide into that position. So we get another set of corresponding angles. This gives us plenty of information. We had in the given two sides that were the same. We matched these angles because they correspond and we matched these two because they correspond which tells us we do know that triangle ABC then is indeed congruent to triangle CDE. And again, if I look at the order closely, I have two angles and then a side, two angles and then a side. And so like the last example, it's angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle as our reason. I want to finish with this because I, I've said this so many times in a real classroom, uh, parallel lines do not reveal anything about sides. They reveal about angles. That's really why someone's giving you parallel lines. It's not telling you about sides. Please pay attention to that. A lot of students will see kind of the, the diagram or whatever that's got the, the parallel lines and say, oh, I know something. Um, this must be equal to this. That's not what it's saying. It's not equal, it's parallel. But because of that, there are many angle relationships. These parallel lines would allow you to know that this corresponds to this and those types of things. So be aware that the parallel lines are about angles. Pay attention to that.